Spirit at First Sight Australia, episode 32. So finally, we're here at the reunion ceremony. So we have all our 12 couples back in the room, minus one, and that's Chris. Yeah, you know, the tall Viking guy. I actually liked him. But anyway. So the reunion ceremony started off with the matchmakers showing the whole group their wedding days. Yeah, so all the other couples got to see everyone's wedding day. That was nice. Very much a... ah, ah. One of those type of moments. Everything looked very promising at the beginning. It really did. But as we know, a lot of them went downhill. But we're going to start with one of our success stories. Yes, Kerry and Johnny. They were the first people on the sofa. I'm just going to cut to the chase. Johnny was asked a question. Are you in love? And he went round the houses a little bit with that. But in conclusion, he said, Yes, I am in love. And this is the first time Kerry's hearing it. So now he's turning around to Kerry to say, He does love her. And she said it back to him. They were blushing. The rest of the group were clapping and were very much, ah, isn't that cute? Yeah, it is cute. It is cute. From day dot, these two were meant to be. I could see that it would be. They've had no problems. They've just sailed through this whole experiment. They've been here before, as they said. They've been married before. So they know the dips, the highs, the lows, the whole nine yards. And... Yeah, they've put their all into this. I can't fault them. The next question that was asked was, what does the future in store? And again, Johnny's answer to that was, and Kerry's answer actually, they're both looking at having kids in the future. Yes, having children. So this is looking promising. Yeah, looking very promising. And I wish them all the best. I really do. Moving on. The next couple on the couch were one of our early contenders. Cameron and Sam. As in Samantha. These two were asked how it all started within their relationship. Uh, Cameron gave the lowdown. I'm not going to go through all that again. But then they brought Coco into the situation. And so what we saw were clips of Cameron and Coco's supposed affair. Yeah. So this is the whole group watching all of the highlights of what went down. Watching the clips, there was just evidence upon evidence upon evidence of this affair. The way they put those clips together just made it look so seedy. Oh, my goodness me. It was endless. But the evidence is stacked up, as we can see. The whole group were just in shock. They just couldn't believe what they were seeing. They just couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. Is this what happened? They thought that it was just a little thing. It was much bigger than they thought. Yeah, they, they, their reaction was just one of, I can't believe I'm actually watching this. Cameron or Coco made it out to be something very small, something not worth talking about. It was much bigger than she made out. Same with Cameron. It was much bigger than he made out. Watching all that evidence on screen, there's no denying it. That was an affair. If you could see Cameron's face. Oh my goodness. 
He looked humiliated. And so he should. Sam also was in shock. She was asked by the matchmakers on her opinion. She turned around and said, it's just lack of morals on both their sides. Cameron turned around at the beginning when we met, talking about he'd been cheated on and it's all about morals and that he would never do that to somebody. But look, he's just a liar. He was a waste of her time. That's really what she said. With that being said, John the matchmaker was holding them both accountable. What you had there was an affair. It was physical, it was emotional. It was done behind your partner's backs. It was a betrayal. It was an outright affair. With that being said, we then saw Coco apologise. She said sorry. Yeah, too little too late, but she said sorry. We then saw John the matchmaker ask Samantha whether she had anything to say to Cameron. And she bluntly turned around and said, no, I've got nothing to say. I just hope I never have to see him again. That's what she said. She hopes she doesn't have to see him again. But at the same time, she had a great experience on the show. She learnt a lot about herself. And she thanked the matchmakers for the experience. That was the end of them two. Shall we say three? Yeah. Moving on. The next couple on the couch were Alana and Jason. Yes. These two. The first question that was asked to them was... Just explain to us what happened. And so, for the first time, Jason spoke. And he turned around and said, everything was good. He thought they'd make it. But at the dinner party last night, we really didn't even say two words to each other, which was quite sad. That's what he said. He never thought they'd get to this place. And then when it came to Alana's take on it, why things broke up is because he doesn't communicate. As I've said it from the beginning, sex is not going to hold that relationship together. So as she said, communication was the biggest problem they had. And there's only so much she can do, she says. There you go. There's only so much you can do. Then you just need to wash your hands of it and walk away, which is what she did. We then saw a film of their life through the experiment, the good, the bad and the ugly. Then after that, you saw they got a little emotional watching that. Then we saw Alexandra ask Alana, what made you change your mind when it came to the vowels? And Alana turned around and said, it was him saying that he has fallen in love with me. She'd never heard that from him. Her emotions took over at that point and she couldn't help but say yes. That's what she said. Lastly, we did hear Mel, the matchmaker, ask them, clearly I can see there's still emotion between you two. Is there no chance of it working? Them two smiled at each other. But Alana shut that down quickly. She said, I still feel for Jason. Outside of this experiment, it just wouldn't work. Not long term, she says. No. And that's so sad. That's what she said. His reply was, he's very disappointed in how it's ended. And for the past few weeks or so, they've had sort of ill feelings towards each other. He doesn't want it to end that way. Alana says, yeah, I'd like us to be friends. And they sort of agreed on that. But at the same time, when looking at Jason, I think he wished for more. He did. But anyway, the matchmakers wished them well. And they went back to their seats. 
The next couple we saw on the sofa were Liam and Georgia. These two are still not on talking terms. You saw them sitting at either end of the couch. Oh dear. John the matchmaker turned around and said he was quite disappointed of how things ended. He thought they were a strong match at the beginning. So did we all. So did we all. We then saw clippets of their time in the experiment, but it was based on the last dinner party as well as their renewal of their vows. So the rest of the group got to see this dramatic ending. Watching all of that, I saw Georgia get emotional watching it. Liam looked embarrassed, to be honest. Yeah. And then the rest of the group were just in shock. They were in total shock. After the film had shut off, all we heard was silence. You could hear a pin drop. It was that quiet. The humiliation. You could see him getting red. You could see his face was red. The embarrassment of it all. The blatant nerve of the man. Oh dear. And then John asked him, how did that feel watching that back? He said it was hard to watch it, but he couldn't understand what the fuss was all about because at the dinner party, he was telling the truth. He said, if my family were to meet you, they would judge you and whatever other questions were asked on the day. Yeah. So he said that part. And then when it came to the final vows, he just couldn't understand what this was about. Her trying to humiliate me, put me down in such a way like I've done something wrong. That's the way he looked at it. And for her to behave that way, as far as he was concerned, she just doesn't know me. And that was him making a judgment call. That's really what he was saying. And then he turned around and said, I was falling in love with her. I don't think she was in love with me. I don't know where he got that idea from. Because then one of the matchmakers turned around and said, is that true, Georgia? And Georgia said, no, I would call him my first love. That's what she said. She saw him as her first love. I don't know where this guy's head was at. He's got his head so far up his ass he can't see shit. Liam was then asked what his biggest regret was. And he said, we're both stubborn people. In hindsight, if we had just put our pride and stubbornness aside, I think we'd still be together. That's how he said it. I still love Georgia. That's what he said. But was it meant to be? And then Georgia's opinion was, we started off so strong and then very quickly things unraveled. I'm not sure that the same thing wouldn't happen again. That's what she said. And that makes a lot of sense. Would we be back where we are now? Not talking, not speaking. Him blocking her on all the socials. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure this would have worked. But to end it, they wished each other well. Yeah, that was it really. Not much more to say there. Moving on, our next couple on the couch were Bryce and Melissa. Bryce started off by telling the matchmakers that they're happy that he's moved to be with Melissa. Yeah, the whole nine yards. So as far as he's concerned, is happily ever after. But then, Mel the matchmaker said, let's take a look at your journey. It's been a wild one. That's an understatement. It definitely has. So we have all the group sitting there with bated breath, waiting for this video to play. You hear some of them saying, let's get the popcorn out. 
Oh, I can't wait for this. Yeah, you've got all that going on in the background. Oh, everybody's waiting for this one. Here we go. The video clips started with the wedding day, which went smoothly enough. Yeah, very romantic. And then it came on to the honesty box where Melissa asked him, am I your usual type? And he said, he touched her hair and he said, well, you've got blonde hair. You're not my type. But at the same time, you're not ugly. Oh, oh my goodness me. If you saw the faces of the group, they were just wincing in their seats. It was cringe. Oh, absolutely embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. And then we saw another clip of where he rated the women. And he put her as fourth. Oh, everybody's watching again. Thinking, God, this guy's a dick. He's a real dick. Oh, dear. And then you heard um, Melissa say, you put me as fourth. You don't even get a medal for fourth. Oh, oh God, help me, please. Oh, this is not looking good. Not looking good at all. But to be honest, it makes no difference. Because she's going to love him anyway. No matter what. And then we saw the confrontation with him and Sam at the dinner party. Where he threw a glass of water over him. Yeah. Then we saw the scenes with the rumour mill about the girl on the outside. Yeah, we saw one scene with him and Beck at one dinner party. Then we saw another scene with Samantha at the girls' night out. Again, mentioning this rumour. And then we saw Bryce break down in Melissa's arms in their apartment. Yeah. And then it ended off with the vow renewals where she said she can't live without him. Yeah. She didn't quite say that, but you know what I mean. After watching the video, John the matchmaker asked Bryce, how did it feel watching that back? And he said, I got into quite a few conflicts. I have got a big personality. I don't always get along with everyone. But as John did say, but with this experiment, you got along with nobody, virtually nobody. Everybody just started laughing. It was too funny. He got along with virtually nobody. Bryce, you're somewhere else. Seriously, you are a character of your own. Oh, dear. Then John went on to talk about the rumour about this secret girlfriend on the outside. And Melissa did turn around and say it did plague their relationship so much that she got to speak to this girl or this woman. She found out from her that Bryce and her had a relationship before he went on to the program they haven't been in contact since the program or during the program and that with speaking to her it cleared the air for her and she got the proof that she needed that's what she said it was at this point that John the matchmaker decided to show them a video of when he took Melissa home to Canberra and they met up with his friends yes that video so the rest of the group got to see this video and shock horror the gift thing was true yes it was everybody was like freaking out to say yes we knew it we knew it Bryce is still trying to deny it though Bryce is still trying to deny it because even when Mel the matchmaker asked him a question about all of this he turned around and said his friends were acting for the camera. How are you lying? How are you lying? And because Bryce was still in denial, Mel decided to ask Melissa the question. Do you feel that what we just saw was fabricated? And she said, how that looks doesn't reflect very well. And looking at that, 
She then turns around to Bryce and says, You apparently bought a gift for somebody. Yes, that's what she said. Bryce sitting there like, didn't know what to do with himself. Just to round this off, in conclusion, it doesn't matter what Bryce does, because she turned around and said, it will be something that we need to discuss. In private. She doesn't want to go over it again. And then one of the girls, I think it was Booker that turned around and said, if we get contacted by anybody, do you want us to tell you or do you want us to just keep it to ourselves? And virtually she said she doesn't really want to know. Keep your opinions to yourself. She doesn't want to be contacted. She doesn't want to hear any more about it. Whatever rumours you've got going on out there or you hear, keep it to yourself. That's really what she was saying. As I said, it doesn't matter what Bryce does. She'll forgive him. She'll forgive him and she'll keep forgiving him. Waste of time. Moving on. Our next couple on the couch were Beck and Jake. Yes, Miss Sourpuss and Jake. Yes. Anyway, I'm going to keep this as short as possible. It started with them talking about him kissing Booker on New Year's Eve. I'm not going to go there again. We've, we've touched on that. Then it went on to clippets of their time during the experiment. So we saw that video, the highs and lows and so forth. Everything seemed very smooth after watching the video. And then John the matchmaker decided to bring something up. He said, oh, I, I want to take it back to the time that you went away to attend to your sick dog. Yes. He said he needed some clarification on something. So what we saw was a video of her and her dog at home. She was talking about the dog's ultrasound and all the rest of it. And then the camera falls and it ends up filming the ceiling. But at the same time, we saw an image of a guy come in. Smooch Beck. Yes, they were snogging. Yes. On camera, you couldn't see the person's face, but they were lip locking. All you heard was pure sound effects after that. Then the film went silent. The camera blacked out. Now, everybody in the group were like, who's that? Oh, shit. Who's that? Yeah, everybody's thinking, what the hell did we just watch? What the hell did we just watch? Miss Beck, yes, the same sourpuss Miss Beck, the one that couldn't be bothered, the one that didn't show any interest to Mr. Jake all the way through this experiment, has a boyfriend. Yes, she has a boyfriend. John the matchmaker then asked her, who is that? Come on, tell us Beck, who is that? Her excuse it was her brother. Oh, hell to the no, was it her brother? Who kisses their brother like that? I don't know who she's trying to fool. Everybody's in the group thinking, nobody kisses their brother like that. No way in hell do you kiss your brother like that. And just to clarify things, they repeated the video again. Yes, we got to see the video again. After watching it a second time, the group turned around and said, one or two people in the group said, that's a pash. Yes, she was pashing. And another one said, that's not your brother. That is not your brother, Beck. It is not your brother. Ugh, this girl. She looked like a deer in headlights at this point. She really did. But did I feel sorry for her? Oh, hell no. I actually enjoyed it watching her squirm but anyway her excuse was he was an ex supposedly that had come to drive her dog to the clinic or something like that and this is the first time they've seen each other in a while and she just got overcome with emotions and they pashed that's what she said that's the excuse she gave that's the excuse she gave and then she accuses him of kissing Booker on New Year's Eve. 
And at the same time, on top of that, he spent 20 days in Perth and she spent two days of that with him only. Who are you fooling? Who are you trying to fool? Definitely not me. Jake may fall for it. But hell to the no, will I fall for that crap? Anyway, to fast forward. We know the reason why she didn't make any attempt with Jake during this whole experiment. Because she had someone on the outside. I'm not even going to sugarcoat this. We, we know what it was. Poor Jake was so upset after this. He went storming outside. Yeah, he, ju he just fell sick. He was made to look a fool. And this sour puss, I told you, I never liked her from the get-go. My instincts were straight on the button with her. Didn't like her. Now I know why. Talk about hypocrite. She accuses Bryce of all the drama. And look at her. Miss Sourpuss. Look at her. Everybody's looking at her. Now she's looking like, like a right hypocrite. She didn't know what to do with herself. And I'm glad. But you did see Beth go over to sit next to her. Beth. I would have stayed your ass over where you were. Leave her right there. So everybody can look at her. Disgusting behaviour. Absolutely disgusting. She deserves everything that comes to her. I've got nothing more to say here. So, moving on. Our final couple on the sofa were Belinda and Patrick. Yes, Belinda and Patrick. End it on a nice note for me. These two I liked from the beginning. I'm so glad they made it through. Belinda was saying that throughout the experiment, she felt slightly stressed. Outside of the experiment, everything's been very natural. It's happened naturally for them. Yeah, they've got closer. They spend a lot of time together. They live in separate places, but they spend a lot of time together. When they go home to their own apartments, she does miss him, she says. Yeah, I really do miss him. And she's also told him that she loves him. Yeah. And of course, he said it back as well. Yeah, so these two, I've got nothing more to say. But they did, we did see a clip of their journey. So we saw from the beginning to the end of their little love story. It was a, a nice romantic ending. Yeah, I, I look forward to seeing where these two go. These two really deserve each other. Patrick did say at the end that he thanked the matchmakers for matching him with Belinda because he finds it awkward to talk to girls. He sees himself as weird and some of the words he used. He wanted to thank Belinda for being Belinda. Oh, that's so cute. That is really cute. But I really wish them two the best. I really do. And so did the matchmakers. So the end of the series ended with John giving a speech to the couples for their participation and ended with him wishing them well on their journey. So we finally reached the end. I too wish them well. And on that note, this is where I'm going to leave it. If you like what you heard, please like, comment and subscribe. Till next time.